Welcome to the Bite Size Science video podcast, brought to you by the American Chemical Society, the world's largest scientific society. I'm Adam Dolevsky. Everyone knows that many animals are meat eaters or carnivores. People who eat meat, they get to buy it in restaurants and stores. Lions, tigers, and other wild animals, they don't have it so easy. They have to hunt down, catch, and kill their own meat. But can you imagine carnivorous plants? Can you imagine plants that attract, <laughs> capture, kill, and eat animals? Amazingly, these types of plants do exist. There are four types of traps in meat-eating plants. Adhesive traps that grab insects. Hey, let me go. Suction traps that suck up their prey. <laughs> snapping traps like the famous Venus flytrap and pitfall traps, like in Nepenthes alata, also known as the pitcher plant. Nepenthes includes more than 100 species. Most of them can be found on the giant tropical islands of Borneo and Sumatra. But they're also found in India, Sri Lanka, Australia, and some other places. This bug-eating plant uses a sweet smell and alluring colors to lure flies, ants, Ooh. and other insects into its cup-shaped leaf. The pitcher bud forms at the top of the leaf and gradually expands to form a pot-shaped trap. The bottom of the pitcher contains a fluid, which is where the digestive juices can be found. The rim of the trap called the peristome, is slippery and often quite colorful to attract insects. Oh. The inside wall is also slick and waxy to prevent escape. Hey, it smells pretty good. The unsuspecting bug climbs whoa, in whoa, and whoa. drowns in the watery fluid at the bottom of the pitcher. That fluid contains substances that digest the insect, almost like a fox's stomach can digest a tasty mouse. Tetsuro Hamada and his colleagues found seven different chemicals in the pitcher's fluid. Three of these chemicals have never been seen before anywhere else. Without them, these bugs would rot Ugh. and stink. Yuck. In the future, some of these chemicals could be really useful. Chemists may use them to make medicines that keep you germ-free, or keep insects off a of farmer's crops. That's it for our Bite Size Science video podcast. Check us out on our weekly audio podcast on iTunes. Also, look out for more videos in the future. Until then, I'm Adam Bileski. <laughs>